In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how to insert an elapsed time timer in your project. This comes as a request of a subscriber. So what we're going to show you is a clip. We have a race going on and let's assume that we'd like to track the elapsed time or count up time in the project. We'll go back to the beginning and click on the effect room which is the F4 shortcut key and that gets us into our effects. I'm at all content. They're alphabetical. I'll go down to the T's and I have one called time stamp. We'll take and drag that to the effect track and increase the duration to match my video clip in track number one. And now what I want to do, if I highlight the timestamp, I'll click on the Modify button above the timeline. I'm going to stretch it out because we have lots of information that we'll need to record here. First of all, we have a frames per second, and you have to make sure it matches the FPS for your particular project. Mine is 30. It detected that, so we're doing fine. If I want to click on reverse time, it will actually give me a countdown timer and I can click a time code to start with in either case. We're going to make this an elapsed time timer so I do not check this box. Then I have different options of how it will appear on the screen. I can do a format in terms of hours, minutes, seconds, and frames, or hours, minutes, and seconds, or minutes, seconds, and frames. I really wish there was one for just minutes and seconds, but unfortunately I don't have that format option. So we'll go hours, minutes, and seconds. I can choose the opacity of the text. The default is fully opaque or 255. And I can make it down to where it's virtually invisible. I can also change the background opacity, which means I have to change the background to do that, I need to drag down to my background color. I have a separator as well. The default is the colon. I can use a dot, a dash, a space. We'll leave it with this one. And then I can have three symbols, a 24-hour. I can have a 12-hour, which starts out with 12. Or I can start with a 12-hour with an AM or PM. In this case, I'm just going to stick with the 24-hour symbol. Then I can choose the position. If I click on that button, that gives me a new screen. I can add, if I want to, a safe zone or grid lines. I have a safe zone here. And if I drag the red dot wherever I want it, that will tell me where the center of the time code will be on the screen. We'll click right there. Now we're going to change the font face and the text color. Let's change the text color to white. We see it immediately. And let's change the font. I'm going to change the font to Impact. And let's enlarge it. Let's make it 36. Click on OK. And there's my font. Now I'll have to change the position again because of the new size. Now it fits very well on the screen. I can also change the background color behind the, the timestamp. And let's take this and make it a uh, light pink. And now the opacity starts at zero and we'll crank it up a little bit so I have a little bit of contrast there. So here we have our formatting. Now we also have keyframe controls. That's a little bit more advanced. We're not going to deal with that in this particular exercise. I'm going to click the effect settings box and close it. And now let's see what difference this makes if we play our clip. We'll go back and give ourselves some more real estate here. Click on Movie, and we play it, and we have elapsed time in the format I picked running on the screen in the upper left corner. Now, if I were to do this and want to be a little more careful about how it looks, I definitely would change the contrast here. I would take the background opacity, make it darker, and then it would stand out more. I might even change the text color to something a little more dramatic. Let's try purple. That stands out even better. And if I play it again, 
now I have the changes. So it's a very simple way to add a, an elapsed time or count up timer in your project in CyberLink PowerDirector.